A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, teach and urge these things. Whoever teaches something different and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the religious teaching is conceited, understanding nothing, and has a morbid disposition for arguments and verbal disputes. From these come envy, rivalry, insults, evil suspicions, and mutual friction among people with corrupted minds who are deprived of the truth, supposing religion to be a means of gain. Indeed, religion with contentment is a great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, just as we shall not be able to take anything out of it. If we have food and clothing, we shall be content with that. Those who want to be rich are falling into temptation and into a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires which plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all evils, and some people in their desire for it have strayed from the faith and have pierced themselves with many pains. But you, man of God, avoid all this. Instead, pursue righteousness, devotion, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Compete well for the faith. Lay hold of eternal life, to which you were called when you made the noble confession in the presence of many witnesses. The word of the Lord. Blessed the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Why should I fear in evil days when my wicked ensnarers ring me round? They trust in their wealth. The abundance of their riches is their boast. Yet in no way can a man redeem himself or pay his own ransom to God. Too high is the price to redeem one's life. He would never have enough to remain alive always and not see destruction. Fear not when a man grows rich, when the wealth of his house becomes great, for when he dies, he shall take none of it. His wealth shall not follow him down. Though in his lifetime he counted himself blessed, they will praise you for doing well for yourself. He shall join the circle of his forebears who shall never more see light. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news to the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, Susanna, and many others, who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Every so often our scriptures give us an idyllic picture of things all coming along and everything falling into place, and you sort of get that sense in our gospel today. There's certainly no 
heavy, challenging teaching there. It's simply Jesus going from one town to the next with a whole slew of followers accompanying him along the way. And as he goes from one town and village, he's proclaiming the good news, and everything seems to be, as they say, hunky-dory, I suppose. We sort of get a glimpse of that in the Acts of the Apostles as well in the early church where it's reported that everybody, the community, is getting along with one another and laying their goods before the apostles' feet to share with the whole church and those who are needy. And you sometimes wonder, where is that world as we go through this life? Well, it's there. Let's face it, there are moments in our life when things are hunky-dory as well, right? We have those good days when everything seems to fall into place, but we also know in the back of our minds the reality of life is that it is tough, that there are challenges always there awaiting us, and certainly that's what St. Paul has been trying to tell Timothy, his young protege who has left in charge of a local community. You can almost sense Paul like being the, the parent, you know, Think about the time when your first child left home and the anxiety maybe that you felt as you've been hopefully given everything you can in wisdom and knowledge to this child and now he or she is going off into the big wide world and who knows what awaits them. All the challenges as well as mistakes and pains and whatever else that sometimes we bump into as we, which we all have to go through if we're going to learn and grow and mature. And certainly the same can be said about our faith journey as well. But St. Paul gives certainly very practical advice to Timothy. And of course, it's not just advice to him as a leader of a faith community, but it's good advice for all of us. And I guess the perhaps the most important thing of all that Paul warns Timothy about is you need to be a good pastor. You need to be gentle. If you're going to minister to God's people and there are all sorts of traps that are out there waiting for you and it's easy to fall into those traps, the temptation of worldly goods, even using faith and religion for your own selfish purposes. If you've been following along in the Office of Readings these past several days, we've been the second reading, which is always a, many times, a patristic reading from one of the writers of the church. It's St. Augustine and his reflections on what a good shepherd is, as well as what a bad shepherd is as well. And bad shepherds are in it for themselves. They use religion, they use their office, their ministry for their own personal gain. They really don't want to lift a finger, so to speak, to serve God's people. And that's really what it's all about for all of us is how do we serve God's people? Because it's not just for priests and bishops and deacons, it's for all of us. We are all ministers of the Word of God and we must not be distracted by these things of the world, the pitfalls that are there. And it's easy for us to stray off the, uh, the road that leads us to God. And it's easy for us to con ourselves or convince ourselves that maybe this other way is better. It is better, maybe for ourselves, but not for the greater glory of God, which is what it always has to be about. And so we are all called to this noble calling. Each of us shares in it, and it's all about ministering, opening our lives to helping others, and that's something that can easily fall out of place. And so we must fight against always that tendency of that selfishness for worldly gain, for titles, or whatever it is. It's about emptying ourselves as Jesus did on that cross, and that's how we share in that cross. So as we begin this new day together, we look for those idyllic moments in which we draw strength from where the Lord has blessed us, but also realize that there are 
hurdles and crosses and challenges that are still there, but God's grace will always get us through it if we simply are confident and use that grace, cooperating with it always. Our intercessions are found on page 53. We trust in God's concern for every person that he's created and redeemed through his son. Let us therefore renew our prayer to him. O oh, oh God of mercy, guide us towards spiritual growth. Fill our, sorry. For your name's sake, do not abandon us forever. Accept us, for our hearts are humble and our spirits contrite. You have called us to a prophetic vocation in Christ. Let us remember all our beloved dead, especially in this Mass. We remember the repose of the soul of Dory Lee and also the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father James Kola, back in 1932. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, together with your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one hope, and one love. Grant our prayers, we beseech you, and help us to keep our eyes on your glory alone. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 